sure do like what I'm seeing so far. Goodness gracious alive. Look at there. Look at there. That plant right there. What's up, Lazy Dog fam? Hope all y'all are having an awesome day. It is Friday, September 13th here in South Georgia. And if we can dodge the rain a little bit. Today, I'm hopefully gonna show you how you can grow a ton of food in a very small space with minimal effort. So in these two long skinny raised beds here, we've got some sweet potatoes and I think it's time to check and see how we did. So this is what those beds look like when they're not covered in sweet potato vines. This is what they look like when those sweet potatoes grow out and get ready to dig. So the sweet potato variety we have planted in those two beds is a vineless variety. And later on in the video, I'll tell you why I like these vineless varieties so much. But anyways, this variety is called Bunch Puerto Rico. Not Puerto Rico, Puerto Rico. It's P-O-R-T-O. And compared to a lot of the other sweet potato varieties out there, this Bunch Puerto Rico variety has a pretty long maturity date. So it usually takes about 120 days to get some nice sized sweet potatoes. We planted these on May 22nd. Here we are, September 13th. So we're not quite at 120 days, but today we're gonna check at least one of these beds and see how we did. We may end up harvesting the other bed. We may end up leaving it for another week or two. So we actually grew this variety in this exact same bed last year and going against my rotation beliefs, I planted some more again there this year. We also added another bed here, giving us two of these long skinny beds full of sweet potato plants. Now one thing I did different this year compared to last year was I doubled the number of sweet potato plants that I put in each of those beds. Last year I just planted one row of plants right down the center. This year I did two rows to see if I could really stack them in there. In fact, let's do a little flashback right now back to when we planted these. It'll all make a little more sense. All right, let's do some planting. As I mentioned earlier, not a whole lot of prep to do these beds. The soil is in pretty good shape here. I need to smooth it out just a little bit. I am going to add a little bit of fertility here. I don't want a ton of fertility in these beds for the sweet potatoes, but I am going to put down a little bit of coop grow here. Just going to sprinkle that over the bed there. Just, I don't know, four or five handfuls one of these long skinny beds like this. Now when we're planting sweet potatoes in the in-ground garden, I do like to make a little mound or a hill to put my plants in, give some nice soft dirt for those sweet potatoes to form. But in these raised beds, all this soil here is really nice and soft and fluffy. So we don't necessarily need to make a mound in these raised beds. Now last year, when I grew these in one of these long skinny beds, I just planted one row of plants right down the center there and did pretty well. But I've got enough plants here and I think I can get away with two rows in here. Really pack these things in here tight. So I'm going to do a row here and a row there. So I've got my plants out of the jar here. These look nice and perky after sitting in that water for a few days. I always like to do that before I plant them. I don't want to put any kind of wilted looking sweet potato plants in the ground. So we're going to kind of tease these apart here if we can and space them out a little bit. And I usually I like put these about, I don't know, 10 to 12 inches apart. So we'll see how far we get with the plants we have here. Oh yeah, we're going to have plenty of plants here. Got these laid out about 12 inches apart, two rows, and I've got the rows staggered a little bit there. Still got this many plants for the second bed. I think this was a bundle of 25 plants or so. so we've got plenty now when you're planting these you'll see some people like to plant them on their side like this so they'll make a little furrow lay them down in that furrow and just kind of poke these leaves up out of the soil that works well you can do it that way we could certainly do that in here but a lot of times i'll just make me kind of a deep hole here and just push those puppies down in there like that right there so there's one in the ground and then we'll get the rest of these planted here in this bed and there we go got them both planted sweet potatoes are probably one of the easiest and fastest things to plant in a backyard garden now i will want to come in here in a minute and give these some overhead water 
just kind of moisten up that soil a little bit keep these things from wilting in the sun today when you've got them planted in containers or raised beds like this you will want to baby them a little bit for that first week or so until they get roots established in that soil not as big of an issue in an in-ground plot but in containers or raised beds where the soil dries out faster baby them a little bit in the beginning now one possible consequence of planting twice as many plants in those beds compared to last year really stacking them in there would be that we get smaller sweet potatoes because maybe they're overcrowded in there a little bit we'll see in a minute when we dig some of these so as you saw in that flashback we put down some coop grow organic fertilizer when we planted those sweet potato slips that we got from steel plant company and then once those plants started to grow a little bit but before they consumed the entire bed i gave them one more light dose of that coop grow but besides that we really haven't done anything with these at all except give them a light splash of water with the watering wand every few days if we're not getting any rain i may have hand watered these i don't know five or six times over the 110 days that they've been planted so very very minimal effort in growing these things and as i mentioned to you earlier this is a vineless variety which means it doesn't crawl or sprawl near as much as a traditional sweet potato variety will so if this was a more traditional sweet potato variety, say something like a Beauregard or a Georgia Jet, we would have sweet potato vines probably consuming most of this raised bed plot here. Those vines would be trying to crawl into some of our other beds. They'd be all over the place. But we can see here with this variety, they stay relatively confined. Yes, they will crawl over the sides of those long skinny beds, but they don't go much farther than that. I think I've got got four foot walkways between my rows of beds here and they've covered them a little bit on that side we've still got plenty of room to move around in here another reason i really like these vineless varieties as i'll show you in a minute they're a lot easier to harvest so with a traditional sweet potato variety as those vines crawl and sprawl all over the place they'll pin down roots and it usually takes longer to remove the sweet potato plants than it does to actually dig the sweet potatoes these vineless varieties don't pin down a whole lot outside of where you actually put those plants in the ground so it makes harvesting a lot faster so given all that this bunch puerto rico variety is perfect for raised beds even perfect for containers i could see where you could have a row of say three or five gallon pots i don't know five or ten pots put one sweet potato plant in each pot yeah they're going to crawl over the side of the pots but not a whole lot so you need very very minimal garden space to grow out this particular variety all right enough talking let's do some digging now our sweet potatoes should be kind of right underneath where we put these plants in the ground and you probably can't see it there's all these vines here let me get some of these out of the way hopefully you can see there now we've got a nice cluster of sweet potatoes right there i believe so let's start gently pulling these out usually under each plant you'll have a few really nice ones and you'll have a few that maybe look like runts but still plenty good enough to eat and these bunch puerto ricos tend to be kind of long and skinny sometimes it's a pretty nice one right there close to a number one sweet tater let's see if we got any others right underneath that plant feels like we got stuff way down there too all right i think that might be all for that plant so one nice one and then some long skinny ones those right there like that man those are perfect for roasting right there that'd be some good eat so let's keep moving along here and see if we were able to duplicate that with any of these other plants here Some of these are deeper down in there than I thought they would be. Goodness gracious. Thought I was gonna be able to dig these by hand. Hopefully, I'll have to go get a shovel. Here we go. Pretty nice one right there. And I didn't plant these that deep from what I remember. But, goodness. Way on down there, almost to the original soil level. 
Now let's check some of these on the other side of the bed. Remember I showed you earlier how we planted two rows in here this year. So we've got a row going that way and a row going this way. Let's check some of these in this row here. Man, some of those are way down there. Come on, baby. Just kind of shimmy them out. There we go. Pretty nice one. You got to be a little careful because you can break these things off in the soil and they'll volunteer back on you if you ain't careful. Let's check this one right here. That looks pretty nice right there. Oh yeah, that's a nice, nice sweet tater right there. That's some good ones. Not every plant is going to perform identically. Looks like we got one here. May have gotten a little too big. Goodness gracious, look at there, y'all. Ain't those pretty. Ain't those pretty. Let's see what this one here is. Oh, yeah. Sure do like what I'm seeing so far. Goodness gracious, a lot. Look at there. Look at there. That plant right there surely showed out. Goodness gracious, at all the sweet taters right there. I might not have brought a big enough bucket. Mercy. Just keep coming. That one there. I'm going to feed that one the chickens. Got a little wet. Got a little rotten spot on it. But I can never get them all out of here. We have surely done pretty good in this spot. There's another nice one. Come on, baby. Another nice one. How about that? So things are looking pretty good so far there. Now it's kind of hard to move the camera around with wet, dirty hands. So I'm going to go ahead and dig the rest of these and we'll see just how many we get in our basket. All right, all right, all right. Now everybody's got their own standards for what they consider to be a decent sweet potato harvest. But by my standards, from approximately 12 square feet there, we did pretty dang good. We didn't fill up that basket. We got a good bit of groceries right there. I held out some of the really, really nice ones. Those two right there are pretty as they can be. I even found a couple Irish taters in there left over from our spring harvest. So that's what we got from just this little bitty bed right here. A lot of groceries for just a little bit of garden space. Now just a little tip, if you're growing this variety in raised beds with some nice soft soil like we have in those, you start digging those sweet taters and you don't find anything, keep digging. Some of those were way, way down there and I had to dig really deep to get them out. I think this would be even easier if you had them in pots and you just dump the pots over, harvest your sweet taters that way. So when we consider the minimal effort it took to grow these, like I said, we just fertilized them one time after planting, gave them a little bit of water every now and then, but didn't do anything else to these. And when we consider how much garden space they occupied, it's a pretty valuable thing to have in your backyard garden, especially for us down here in that heat of summer slot when it's kind of hard to grow a lot of stuff because it's so hot and humid down here sweet potatoes fill that gap perfectly and come you know late summer early fall whatever you want to call what we're in now we can harvest these and we can have some delicious groceries going in to the fall months because these store so well now, if you've never grown sweet potatoes before, you might not know this, but you don't want to eat these right away. They need time to cure a little bit. And there are specific ways that professional growers cure these things. All I do is spread them out on my rack underneath the barn out there, wait a couple weeks, wait for the sugars to kind of mature inside these things, and then we'll eat them. So I just give them a couple weeks underneath the barn, and then we'll start chomping away at these things. And as I've told you many times before, I'm not really a big fan of baked sweet taters with the butter and cinnamon on there, adding all that sweet stuff to them. The way we like to cook them is to fry them or roast them, and I like mine more salty than I do sweet. That's why I like this shape of sweet tater over this shape of sweet tater. I know I may be in the minority on that, but this is 
kind of what you would use if you were going to bake one these right here are much easier to cut up into uniform pieces for frying or roasting whatever now we'll use both of them but these right here are really ideal for what i like to use them for so even if you're very limited on garden space, you can still grow out some really nice sweet potatoes to enjoy in the fall months. I think maybe the smallest plant quantity Steel offers on their website is 12 plants. I think we did 12 plants in each bed there, something like that. So you could take 12 plants, have 12 pots. You don't have to plant them all, but you can get a decent amount of sweet potatoes depending on how many your family eats, but a decent amount to last you at least a month or two going through the fall maybe longer than that and if you've started digging sweet potatoes let me know in the comments below how yours did this year and if you want to see that entire video when we put those sweet potato slips in those two raised beds you can watch that right here you'll see the whole process start to finish not just that little clip that i showed you earlier so check that out and we'll see you next time right here at lazy dog farm